my maid in the image of God. The other day, I came across your page, not the other day, a while back, I came across your page, listened to your music, it's very hard, I was like, I need to get this guy in the studio so I can chat to him and get pe let people know who he is, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. So, I guess, what I'm starting off at is, how did it all begin for you? Like, not necessarily music, but just, like, in life in general, like, what, what, was, your, what was your upbringing like? Um, my upbringing in terms of music, really, I'm, I'm raised in a music household and everyone loves music. Okay, so Different music's already music. from the beginning. Yeah, man. Okay, Different right. types of music. You've got reggae, you got hip-hop, like the original hip-hop. Yeah. You know, Biggie, Tupac, the basics. The the, 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 the classics, classic stuff. Yeah, and then yeah. you've got like your UK garage and that, you know what I mean? It all mix up of different sounds and that. Obviously, yeah. my dad's a reggae lover, so that's where I got that kind of influence from. And then obviously, just the hip-hop and that. Rapping this year, that's like my mum and dad. Okay, okay. And my brother as well, it? My brother's a big influence on the music because he does music as well. He's not really put anything out of there, but yeah, yeah. He he's a big influence on my life with that film. So no, does he yeah. still make me? He still makes music to this day. No, nah, he's got music, but he doesn't. But he just doesn't, doesn't it release it. Oh, yeah, he okay, doesn't put it out. He's so sick though. He's, diff he's a different kind <laughs> of guy. From like, trust me, I'm telling you. So why is he not putting out music? I feel like he's just trying to do his own thing in life now. He's he's thirty, so he's like you know he's a big man. He's trying oh, okay. To, he's trying to like just live life yeah. type shit. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. But what was it like? Well, did you grow up in Brixton or did you grow no, up I in grew Croydon? Up in Croydon, Croydon sorry. Yeah. So what was it like growing up in Croydon, like being exposed to this music? <laughs> do you know what? I'll be so honest. Like yeah, obviously, you see the crime that happens every day, yeah. but it's like I feel like Croydon has a massive stereotype in it. Like it's actually not it that does. bad in certain areas. It does. Because obviously Croydon is a massive borough. Like, it yeah. stretches out mad far, but. It's actually not as bad as it, like, in the area I live in, obviously I'm not going to say in it, but yeah. that area that I live in, it's not that bad. Is it it's, it's Croydon? It's, it's in the Croydon borough, but it's not Croydon. Oh, I see, I yeah. see what you mean, okay. But yeah, it's just not as bad, but, like, the area itself is calm, I guess. But, because, this is why Croydon gets a bad rep by everyone else in London, I was yeah, saying. That. Because, ahead, first of all, it's, like, way, way from everywhere else. That's number one. And number two, whenever you go to Croydon, like... It's like a one in three chance of you getting, like, back in the day anyway. I don't know what it's like now. Yeah. Back then, I'm talking about, like, a, like maybe, like, 20, I mean, 2008, 9, 10-ish. Right. Every time you go to Croydon, it's a one in three chance of getting robbed. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. That's why we never used to go to Croydon. I, I, I was, like, I used, at that time, I used to live in Lewisham, minute. Yeah. And... Most of my brethren, everyone would go to like places like Peckham, sometimes Brixton. It wasn't too bad, but Croydon, it's like, where are you going there? Like, do you know what? No, it's not. It's just, it's just a bunch of niche. From like the other day, I went Croydon, like when I was um, doing work experience. Yeah. And I jumped out the um the station, the, mm -hmm. the train station. And there was something nitty outside with a with a beer can from, and he was just shouting that's bear crazy, shit from. He was just shouting as well. I don't know. But you don't really get much like happening in Croydon. Croydon's just a town. Like, yeah. Town is calm. But it's coming up now, though. Croydon's coming up now in, in terms mm. of like they've got some infrastructures around. The Box Park is amazing. No, like they've been, yeah. And, yeah. and in terms of like music as well, there's been quite a few different people from Croydon that's like, that have like made it globally that are now reinvesting into the area. No, facts. So shout out to thanks. like people like Dave and Stormzy, you know what I'm saying? No. So, okay, I guess. <clears throat> Talk me through, like, what what was... Because, obviously, he was walking out in the house. He was hearing music. I'm sure he was getting inspired by it. Your older brother makes music as well. Yeah. But you didn't straight away decide to pick up the mic and start making music. No, I picked How up the pen. How did that happen? Picked up the pen and pen, didn't it? Okay, picked you know up the I mean? pen first. Because where it was back in the day, during them times, it was mm. Blackberries, isn't it? So he was always yeah, like, the writing BBs. in his Blackberry notes. Yeah. Trust me. And then I see that. I remember that. And I'm there, like, maybe, what, maybe five, six years old. So I don't have a BB. So I was like, yeah. We just start writing down on paper, and then it just from there I just continued, didn't it? Obviously, you, start, you started at five. Yeah, from a young age, like yeah. writing, well, trying to write, yeah, whatever you want to consider writing at that age. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, no, I, I just kept writing and writing, and when he, I was, I would always go to him and be like, oh yeah, this is what I wrote. Can you read it? And he would rap it. He would try to rap it. It would just sound like rubbish in it, but it was cool. To, it <laughs> but was, it's a good start. Yeah, yeah, good start. And it was cool. It was sort of a thing. It was cool to have that bond in it. Mm. Like that's my older brother. That's my role model type shit. So it's like you know what I mean. Damn, that's important. A lot of black people, like as as black people, we don't really talk about that a lot. Like, ha, like the 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 sort of significance the older male figure yeah. has on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you obviously don't incriminate yourself, like that, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know if you like grew up around like the roads and that. Mm. 
I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know. No, I'm. I'm saying like okay. it's. it's yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah. Okay. Did he? Did he? Was he instrumental in him like getting you more into the music side as opposed to that nasty side of things? If that makes sense. I mean, sense. obviously, you know, everyone's. Uh, what's the word? What's it? What's the saying? Different. Everyone's a uh, a product of their environment. environment but yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. with the right people around you, are able to maintain the balance in it. And he's one of the people that I can say that I know that he's been able to maintain the balance throughout his life in it. So. He was mm. obviously doing his thing, but he was keeping like his family away from it. So okay. that's where the music came in. Cause I feel like it was probably an outlet for him. You know what I mean? All right, all right. And obviously, he still does it now and then. Like I'll go chill with him. No, you rap a couple bars. Yeah, shout but, out to him, man. But like, yeah, no. From then, it's just like we just kept continuing, and then he started helping me with like wordplay and writing words better and stuff. He mm-hmm. helped me a lot with my English, so shout out to him. Innit? Okay, you know I mean? okay. Obviously, I have I don't have dyslexia. I have this counselor, which is basically dyslexia in maths, in it so. It's hard um, to do maths, but with English, I struggled as a kid as well. So with that and putting the writing in together, he helped me. And then obviously with music, music helped me write in English. You know what I mean? Okay. That's dope. So, what, okay, well, when, do you remember your first bar you ever wrote? Nah, that was ages <laughs> ago. <laughs> All right, okay, cool. What's the first bar you remember writing? I remember um, using the Muhammad Ali bar. I think it was float like a butterfly sin. That could be, guys know I'm fly like Muhammad Ali or something like that. Okay, you know, okay, little... okay. That's like the chipmunk vibes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nah, I'm popping them, <laughs> though. Yeah. All right, that's hard. All right, okay, so when, when did you go? When did you start recording then? When did you go like, okay, cool, I could put this in the beat now. I've written enough and I feel like confident enough to just be like, you know what, fuck it. Do you know what it is? Let's make a song. It took me a while to actually like start recording because my original plan when I was younger, it's like secondary school. Mm. I have this mate, man, it's shout out Jamie. Like he um he really started to get into music as well, innit? Okay. And it was a thing where his mum would take him to the studio every now and then to record one or two songs. Mm. And at the time, I didn't have pee, so I couldn't roll in it. Although, like you know, it's one of them ones they offered to pay for you, but you're but it's like you're yeah. proud, you know what I mean? So I was just like, yeah, I ain't got pee at the moment. And then that, I think my birthday came around one time, and I was about. 14 yeah and my brother bought me um, a big mac and um okay. a, a macbook and a and a mac and that so yeah. i got all the equipment and that. that's what i was going to say i was, was yeah. going to be like can you clarify that because there's a big mac <laughs> yeah no, yeah yeah, but I get, yeah right. I get it. and the apple mac in it yeah. yeah but um he bought me that for my birthday and from then i just started grinding but from okay. before that i had a little hp laptop that i used to borrow off my mum and little headphones and that so i yeah. record in the headphones but um from when i got the mac everything just went Better, like I, I elevated, even okay. though the music still wasn't as as it, but it needs to be. Know. But yeah. but still, at least it was is a good start so, of yeah. you. Do you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. also as well, like you had a very good support system around you. No, thank you. One hundred percent, and that's very important. That we can't we can't overlook that. Yeah. All right. So you got your Mac now, and you're you're kind of like testing things out. And from what it sounds like, you're not quite there yet in terms of like your artistry and and you know. Ho- like holding it down and making it like tangible this is me this is my sound yeah. you know what i'm saying and now i hear your music and not only do you have that you all you also got like some versatility to you, you mm. know what i'm saying you can do the sing rapping stuff yeah you, you could bar bar stuff like this yeah, there's I try, songs... I try. <laughs> <laughs> now don't be modest man the yeah. songs that i've heard i was like wow this nigga rapping rapping because <laughs> the first songs i heard was like the sing melody stuff yeah, and most of the time when I hear about artists, whenever they do now, I never hit really. There's some, there's some guys out there. Don't get me wrong, but I never. Yeah. It's very rare when you hear another song that is spitting on, and it's like, woo, goddamn, this nigga's spitting, spitting. Right, so how did it, how did you kind of like grow that? You know, I guess that skill to be able to be versatile. Talk me through it, and I don't think, leave anything out. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got it, I got you, I got you. But yeah, yeah, no, the thing is, I used to listen to a lot of like American American rap, like Juice World, mm. you know, Young Fug. Like back in the days, mm. so um, I feel like a lot of the the melodic melody rap kind of comes from there. Isn't it? Okay, that makes sense. And obviously Drake, one of my big influences with rap as well. Like he used to make a couple songs that he used to bang still. Like you got come through, you got from time. Bear them different songs from back in the day. Yeah. And then from after that, I think obviously I started rapping in it, like rapping as a kid. So yeah. all the UK music, the gram and whatever, Skepta, Octavian, Jamie, Willie Them Man, Temper T, great influence from them. And I think after a while, I just thought, you know what, why not do both in it? Because as an artist... Yeah, it makes sense. Especially if I'm... Because um, obviously I'm taking music seriously. Like, mm-hmm. Obviously everyone has the inkling to do music and do it for fun until it gets serious. That's but true. me, from the start, it's always been serious in it. So with music, I've always tried to, you know, apply myself when it comes to being versatile. Like I was saying, it takes more than one person. It, it can only take one... It can take one person to, like, want to listen to your music. But if you're on that same flow, like, for example, Central Sea, mm. like... 
there's a big con- there's a big controversy between his sound because he's already reached out to America and he's a big yeah. guy in the UK, but yeah, he's like he's very one sided when it comes to his music. Like it's, it's different, pieces, but it's the same kind of. Flow, I get what you mean. Of, yeah, you know what I mean. Kind so, of like the issue that I have with Ross Millions. Like, yeah, no, Russ, the same. Russ is literally the same, same artist song. every song from. Literally. Uh, no, nah, but the thing is with Russ, he's, he's, doing, he's doing bits though, even though he's got... Yeah, like, no, he's doing his thing, I can't hate on it. Like, if it's yeah. successful for you, hey man, I can't, can't... But I just I just wouldn't listen to it, me personally. But there's <laughs> yeah. niggas listening to it, to each his own, innit? Like, you're making no. bread, I can't hate on that. I can't hate on no man that's making bread for him. That's fair. And taking care of his family, because, yeah... Kind of, what kind of human being would you be? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no facts. Same shit. But yeah, carry on. But yeah, um, from then I just started rapping, got better, at it, and then I understood that like I need to pick a better beat selection. Cause back then I was still trying to rap like a gram artist on Juice World beats, and that oh. wasn't working. So I had to start <laughs> looking for, and that's another thing as well. Type beats on YouTube are so hard to find like a specific beat that you want. But back then I was looking for type beats and all that. I started looking at maybe what young thug type beats and mm. trying to hop on that type of wave. And I made a song Formula. It's a young thug type beat, I think. It's on my SoundCloud way down. Like I think I released it in 2020. All the way, all the way down. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I released it around 2020. And this is like just when I started transitioning from doing a. Because yeah, before that, I started doing an American accent, innit? I started off with the American accent rather than doing it. Oh, UK before the Grand? Yeah. Okay. So before that, I started doing A lot of people accent. did that at some point. Yeah. But why did you, like, what, what, what made you switch? Because I just I just realized it was different and I liked it more myself. Like mm-hmm. I feel like rapping in an American accent to a song is well and good when it's like an American person doing it or someone else. But yeah. me listening to my songs and hearing it back, I hear. Yeah, like, it, it you, doesn't sound right when UK guys do it. Anybody could, that, you can ask anybody that listens to my music. Anytime they ask me about um, a song that I've got called Messages or, or Stay in Contact or any of those type of songs, I use an American accent. I just yeah. say I don't like it because it doesn't sound. It makes sense. You know, yeah, and, yeah, and I'm sure you probably feel a little bit like, no, nah, that's not truly me. Yeah, you know exactly. What I'm saying? Like, exactly. And I feel like that's why I changed as well, because it's not true to myself. Like, I sort of, I started doing um, the UK thing. Yeah. And niggas get onto me now as well, because I have like, a bunch of niggas that I know from the UK that use like an American accent and something. I'm saying, it's your UK accent. <laughs> then niggas would be like, nah, it's not it. <laughs> but no, it's, um, nah, it's just, man, it's different. Fucked. Yeah. Carry on, sorry, sorry. Carry nah, it's on. literally different. It's just different, isn't it? That's, that's all it is. Like, it's, it's, it's a different essence. And especially yeah. if you got niggas from the UK hopping on yeet type beats with their, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but even, even with that, like, even if they jumping on like a yeet type beats, mm. even if they do yeets, like, you know, you know how yeet's got that like, little high pitch, like, yeah. even if they do that, but in a UK accent, it always comes out like different. Yeah, it's exactly. like that, but with a little bit of a UK swag. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why I fuck with people like Lancey Foy, for example. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Like, because Lancey is not just gone to America and just start, talking like that he's doing what they're doing but in a uk accent and it no, makes exactly. sense for him and he's opening a whole new lane for uk artists and some people say that he might have influenced playboy carty's style you know that's what a lot of people are saying that's what a lot of people say but, it, but everyone's just, got to, everyone's allegedly got to <laughs> it's true everyone's got to give up to lancy though because even though he might not be the 100 percent like the reason why the uk has an underground like he definitely popped like open parts. Like. One thousand percent, one thousand percent, and and I think, I think he, honestly, I will credit it to him. I will credit. See the, the whole rage movement, uh, crash rage, whatever yeah. you want to call it, super trap. Yeah, yeah. I I credit that to Lancey for, because yeah. before, because I found out about Lancey time ago. This mm-hmm. was even before I even listened to any of his music nah, or whatever. Same. I got put on time ago as well. Time ago, yeah. back then niggas wasn't making. Um, rage or crash, yeah. niggas was, was not doing that at all. This was yeah. like maybe five years ago. No, niggas was not doing that at all. And Lancey was brave enough to, and in fact, at this point, like UK hip hop or UK rap, or whatever, was what was more famous and grammar yeah. as well, obviously. And niggas was dissing that type of music, in fact. No, niggas was like, what are you not doing? Like, why are you not trying to sign? Why are you not trying to do American things? Do you and, know what? I can relate to that as well because when I got put onto him, which is like 2019, I was one of them people as well. Yeah. Me and my brethren, shout out young Renz, me and my brethren was in class, in the immediate <laughs> music class. Yeah. And, he, and he was saying, this guy's not, this guy Lance, he's hard, he's going to blow up, I'm telling you, da 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 da. And I'm like, alright, cool, show me my man. And then I see my man, I'm like, you're looking a bit skinny still. <laughs> and then I listen to his music and I think I listen to <clears throat> Steel Flow. And that song, okay. that song is tough. Yeah. Like, I, lo- I love the song now, but when I first heard it, it's like, 
I couldn't stop laughing from uh, because you numbers. because yeah because it was a new style you yeah. didn't understand it at the point right? exactly like yeah. it was just something that I couldn't like comprehend at the time and then yeah. I started listening to it over and over again even now like I'm still getting into Lancy now like I can actually appreciate his music because it's something that I like one hundred percent one hundred percent he and he's uh, I credit honestly I, the whole like UK on the underground that has to do with, like trap super rap I mean super trap. Yeah. Um, Crash, Rage, what, what have you? I credit all that to Lancy, man. Because I feel like niggas saw Lancy doing it without being like intimidated. Yeah. Because there was no, no one else doing it at the time. Mm. And then niggas just like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just let's do it. let's do, do it. our thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then now there's a whole ecosystem with like from like the Thai the Thai savages to like, Flexo to like fucking even like I wouldn't say KD makes rage, but even KD as well like yeah. How he's so vast, how he's so like unique no. as an artist. Do you know what I'm Thanks. saying? I, I I credit that all that to Lancey Fo, man. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Alright, let's get back into you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> <right>. pause. <laughs> but but um, okay. So at what point? At what point did you then start like? Because obviously you've always taken music seriously. Yeah. Right. But then there's music, there's making the music, recording it, blah blah blah, and then there's branding yourself and putting visuals out then you know what i mean mm. at what point do you start thinking about it from a business perspective do you know what i'm saying i'd say during lockdown like a lot everyone can agree that lockdown is the thing that brought everyone to music like all of these new artists it's because of lockdown or it's either because of a friend from lockdown or something like that so with me i feel like in lockdown i was able to just lock in because that's when i started six for a minute mm. and then everything was just a bit yeah. but with um when it came Damn, to music what, lockdowns when you started six from how old are you um 18. Yeah. that's crazy <laughs> Bro, yeah. what, you're, you're, you're way more mature than your age, you know? I appreciate it. I thought you was like 24, <laughs> maybe 22, 20. something like that. Yeah, I thought he was older than, older than 18. No, I'm 18. crazy, alright? But yeah, no, um, I started sixth form um, mm. just after lockdown, and um, everything was a bit crappy. Like, it, weren't, it didn't feel... Because obviously everything had changed at the time. Like, people weren't allowed to go outside, they had mm. to wear masks, they had to be extra cautious. So me being indoors, like, really harnessed my creativity skills, I think. Because I was able to, like gauge on what I thought about music and that's why I, that's why I really changed when it came to versatility you okay know what I mean? okay so you took your time to study yeah that's what it sounds like yeah and what, what what's that like compared to before studying and after studying what like what was shifted in your in the way that you understand your style and your music you know mainly music for you in it because I, I I record my stuff I mix and master my stuff and oh, you mix and master them as well sometimes I produce as well in it so Damn it's it. like I've I've given myself the time to be able to learn certain things. And obviously, in secondary school, I did B-Tech music, innit? Oh, okay, so that makes sense. The technical side of music, it was already kind of there for me to be able to actually get to work in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's amazing. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. All right, so now, what, what are you kind of like, like, what are you trying to do with all this? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, like, I know that you're already serious about the music. Yeah. But what's the end goal for you? Like, the end goal is for me to reach? sit there. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe forty years old. Yeah. yeah, maybe to sit there forty and be able to sit and look back on my life. Yeah, and be like, yeah, I achieved this, I achieved that. I was able to help this person. I was able to help that person. I was able to do this for my life. Do you know what I mean? Because it's all about the end goal in in, in all reality, in it. Like, yeah. if you don't, but you it's, you can't not have an end goal. If you have a if you have a task, then the end, you know the end goal is already in it. One so the end goal really is just to be able to appreciate what I've done in it. Even if I don't get as far as I want to. Which I don't know. Obviously, in, in, at times like now that I'm not so big, I still have self doubt. But hopefully, yeah. when I do get to that time in life, I'm able to be... sit back and be like, "Yeah, I achieved what I wanted in life." Do you know what I mean? Put in the hard work and shift. One hundred percent. And in terms of talking about self self doubt, it can be easy for us to like get into a point, especially as creatives, mm. where we feel like imposters, just because you know we haven't been validated by some type of certificate or whatever. Yeah. But Bro, bro, trust me, you need to 100% believe in what you're doing. Facts. And also as well, like, look at the impacts that it's having on other people when they hear your songs. Like, mm. say for example, if I heard your song and I thought it was trash, I wouldn't invite you here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, like, you, I shout out to all the guys that are making trash music. <laughs> but, like, it's it's an indication that, like, you're going somewhere. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's... Because I'd like us to talk from a... Not, and when I say this, I'm not talking about you specifically, but it's yeah. just something that I've noticed that, like, just, you know, just people that make music that might be considered urban. I hate that word, but yeah. let's just use that for now. Mm-hmm. 
we don't really be confident in our ability enough. And I think we've got way more ability than other genres. In my opinion. What do you mean by that, though? Like, for example, people that make... When you make, like, rap music, hip-hop, whether it's melodic trap, whatever, I feel like those musicians have more in their repertoire than a pop musician, for example. Mm. But then when I meet pop stars or pop musicians, they're way more confident in their music Mm. than the other side. Do you get what I'm saying? I feel like it's because they can stay in their lane. But that's why a lot of these underground artists are now branching into different... In different I mean? lanes, like, look yeah. at say take it from an American standpoint, like, yeah. American underground. You got Jace, that nigga was doing that, like you know, the, oh, funny thing we're running from come here. Oh, I, I heard, but but, but put I'm, me on. I'm gonna put you on, but yeah, yeah, like Jace, he made a song, got blew up with it. It's calm, um, like and then he in um, what's it called? He then t- took on this um genre called regalia. It's like an okay. it's like underground, it's like um, a new genre. genre. Yeah. It's like you yeah. know, you hear them bells and them them violins, and it's it's why it's mad to explain. I'll be honest with you. This is the first I'm hearing, but put me on because yeah. that's what I'm saying. But yeah, there's so much shit coming out that's like completely new and innovative. Mm. But it's just like for some reason there isn't enough light shunt on it. Yeah, and I remember like, is this guy American? Is yeah, it? I was gonna say it's probably because it's American, isn't it? So like the UK is still new to a lot of the American. Yeah, one hundred percent. But yeah, like with Jay, he's like he was doing this sort of music, and then he had like a little alternative rock um, album that he put out recently. Yeah, you know what I mean, so it's. It's about changing lanes, like changing, um, switching up your versatil- versatility. versatility. Yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. And then you've got like, who can I use from the UK? I mean, obviously, niggas that I know, obviously, mm. they're, they're doing like the American thing, and then sometimes they'll jump on an alternative rock track or they'll jump on an indie pop track. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like, I've done that before, but I deleted the song because I didn't like it, innit? <laughs> fair um, enough, fair but enough. But like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's good to. But it's to good to experiment. Change. Yeah, exactly. It's good to experiment because you never know. You never know what you're going to sound like if you did like a, maybe like a. Jersey dance tune or whatever. No, thanks. And she might sound lit. You never know. That's you something as well. Know. Jersey. Jersey's really popping off in the UK right now. 100%. A lot of artists are doing Jersey. Shout out to you. He's one of the guys that put me on Jersey. Like, oh, to your guy. You just followed, yeah. you just followed us on, on Instagram. Man. Yeah, that's my guy. Stuff. Shout out to you. Yeah, no. I might message him still. But I still need to like do my research. Yeah. See. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm going gonna, gonna to put you on some people. I'll, yeah, put yeah. me on. Put me on before you leave today. But um, give me a top five like musicians or oh i knew he was gonna say this <laughs> top five I, um you have to ask top five and where though because i can do top five all around top five us and two top five uk oh all right just give me top five general general top yeah. five. Ooh, that's tough it is tough uh, number five yeah. i'd probably have to put you know i mean you don't have to do in order but if you want to yeah no, no particular order but just in who, yeah. who i can think of in it i'd probably put drake okay Solid. Um, that's that's a tough question because I've, I've got there's so many different artists that I like. Uh, cool, I'd say. Let me just name a couple of artists. Yeah, I know, go on, go on. I've got Drake. Yeah. Um, J Cole was an influence from Young. Okay. You've got Jamie. I Jamie. love Jamie's music. Yeah. And then you've sense. got Temper T. Temper T. Ooh. And DWE. And then in terms of the new age, ooh, I'd hard. say. I'd say... That's crazy. How do you know about this guy? You're only 18. Yeah, bro. It's only like, from young. Like, D-double-E, Temper T. That's like... Yeah. Temper that's like my guy. My so. era. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, Temper T's... Oh, my God. I feel, I feel like Temper T's one of those guys that's, like, so underrated. No, In thanks. terms of, like, how UK music has grown. He was so vital in getting it from being an underground thing to just, to being, like, a more mainstream, more everyone knows about it. Like, a national yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? Because everyone's yeah. screwing up Temper T. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I mean... Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying like yeah, yeah. even before people knew what grime was or what you know what that music was that's that's crazy but anyway sorry carry on one thing as well I will say about Temper yeah. it's like obviously I don't know I've said this to everyone that, I, that knows I make music like I'll say a lot of like violent stuff in my music like I'm yeah. shanking guys and kicking guys up and <laughs> it's like I'm just in love with the ideology of violence within music like, because obviously <laughs> It's mad, it sounds mad, isn't it? But like, it does, it does. Because you're the first rapper that's actually admitted that. <laughs> but I'll tell you why, though. I'll tell you why. Like, yeah, good, I'm good. in love with psychology now. I love psychology. I've not, yeah. I haven't done it, but it's just, it's just it intrigues me, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. But when it, obviously, you know about different frequencies making mm-hmm. people feel different you should, ways. And, you, should, you should actually um, pursue that, by the way, if you, if you like it. But carry on. Yeah. Um, like, I've, I started, in lockdown as well, I started yeah. learning about um, frequencies and how changing the pitch and the tone of a song will make someone feel a certain way yeah. while listening to it so with music i was also understood that saying certain things 
will make someone sort of feel Absolutely. Like, like if you told someone to suck their mum on a track, like you're gonna, they're gonna feel like my mum. Like, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So when I'm telling niggas to suck their mum on a track, it sounds bad. <laughs> it and I'm does. thinking like, it does. Obviously, it might be offensive sometimes, but sometimes it, you got to just embrace the music and like reverse it. Like, that's you know what I mean? true. That's what I was gonna say. Like, it depends on the approach. Yeah, exactly. Say for example, like someone was screaming like a madman over the track. <laughs> Like, yeah. then obviously uh, you see people being, like, taken aback, right? Yeah. Like you said, you just mentioned psychology. Yeah. Like, there's a, there's a Kano song where the hook is literally, suck your mum, suck yeah, your mum. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, heard yeah, that, yeah, yeah. But it sounds so beautiful. No, trust that me. even BBC allowed him to perform to that yeah. <laughs> on crazy. fucking, I can't remember the name of the show, but he, he performed it on one of those shows and it was incredible. So, like... It's, yeah, the, the music psychology is very interesting when you get when you dive deep into that. Sure. But for you, like, you personally, what would you say success means to you? Like, what would you want to happen for you to be like, okay, cool, I feel like I'm successful now? I mean, overall success, again, it's the end goal, isn't it? But yeah, I'd course. say in steps, like, success is um, being able to gauge the um, engagement from people who aren't your friends. Because obviously, mm. the engagement from your friends is all well and good, but I feel like that's what puts a lot of artists down. Because... Everyone expects their friends to be on top because it's like that's your friends, isn't it? Absolutely, and also as well, your friends don't necessarily have to support your music. Exactly, no one owes anybody anything, anything. in the world, isn't it? So it's like, and just because they don't support your music doesn't mean they hate you. They might, it's just they might not be their cup of tea. Or you want them to pr- pretend? No, exactly. Like, and what I always tell people as well is that your fans aren't anywhere near you. You have to go out there and go find them. You no, know what I'm saying? I because literally said the same thing the other day on my socials. Like, yeah. I was saying, um, someone else was um, also saying that um, they, they weren't feeling, um, they were feeling the way because they weren't getting much support in it. Yeah. But um, basically, um, I'd seen that their music's doing not too bad. They're getting like maybe 200, 300 plays um, a track where I'm still struggling, do you know what I mean? Mm, mm, so it's mm. like, it's more of an uh, appreciate what you got kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And put things in perspective. Exactly. Do you get what I'm saying? Because maybe you got, maybe you, you, you got 200 today. Mm. You used to say in a year's time it might be in two million. Exactly, like you used that. Used to say it might be two thousand. Who knows? That happened to a couple of my songs already. Like I dropped, um, you know, "Blood on the Leaves" by Young Chris. No, Young Chris. Yeah. You need to put on, you know, I feel like <laughs> I feel like there's a generational difference. Yeah, yeah right. Because you're eighteen, recently. I'm twenty nine. Like okay, there's yeah. A whole yeah. Lot, lot of years. So Young Chris is like a new artist. Yeah, he's a new artist in okay. the um, US. He, he made a song called Blood on the Leaves. Yeah. He blew up from it on TikTok. But um, I made a remix to that okay. song. Okay. And um, also I made a, like an R&B song called um, Buzz Lightyear Freestyle. And maybe, say, two months ago, that was on maybe, what, 600, 700 plays. Yeah. Buzz Lightyear Freestyle is now on about, I don't even know, I think it's about 4K plays on SoundCloud. There you go. And then but Blood on the Leaves is about 1 point something K. There you so go. It's, like, it all takes, it's all about taking time, really. Exactly. And the more people find out about it, and that's what, that's what I say to artists as well, like, especially like underground artists like yeah. yourself, put, just put out your music, just put it out, don't, don't worry about like, don't worry Waiting. too much, exactly, and don't worry yeah. too much about, oh, no one's going to support it, just keep promoting yourself, keep putting yourself out there, and just keep dropping, because what happens is, someone that fucks with you is going to listen, right, yeah. one time they might just stumble upon your stuff. And once they see that you got bare things there that they can't listen to, yeah. now they're excited to tell other people about it. Exactly. That's the same conversation I have. I have like this little group of people called the members. Shout out the members, everyone in the members. That's my guys. But um, we're all artists and, and producers. And everyone has the same kind of thing. Like a lot of the guys in there won't drop um, consistently. Mm. And when I say consistently, I don't mean drop one every month. I mean drop one here, there, and snippet, yeah. video, any type of content. Like, That's the issue I have so, with UK artists. Yeah, like everyone's not as consistent. And really and truly, it's like even down to yesterday, I was on Discord with one of my boys and mm. he's dropping a little album soon in, I think, April the 11th, I think it is. Shout out to Ope. But um, he's, got, he's got so much potential mm. with his music. This is just my um, opinion. So anybody else's opinion could be different. They don't take yeah, it the wrong way in it. But um, his music at the start, he used to make a lot of... Uh, gospel church kind of music like because yeah. he's a singing guy and he can sing but um it wasn't really something that pulled me in because it's like it's, i don't really listen to gospel it's not yeah. my type of music but recently he's got on the rage star kind of thing in it oh okay. so he's making the music and as he's been because he records and and sort of mixes and masters himself as well yeah. so as i'm hearing the progression it's like yeah you're getting better do you know what i mean and it's the same with a couple other in the members as well like shout out shay as well like he records on band oh, like, Shay. No, it's a guy called H-A-X-O. That's my okay, guy. Okay. Shout out, Shay. But um, he records on Bandlab on his phone, which is Damn, crazy. That's 
That is crazy. But his music quality it sounds good as well. What? Like. What, recorded on the phone? He records on his phone using earphones and the quality still sounds good. That's crazy. But it's crazy. That's the thing with music, I feel like, as well, that might be a thing that's affecting music because music's so accessible these days. Mm-hmm. That it's hard to Easy. appreciate. Yeah. It's very yeah. hard to appreciate creation. Even though using a band lab on a phone, it might take hours and you put your time into it. I feel like with music traditionally, it's hard because like, even when I go to my mates to record or I go studio, I realise how much time you put into maybe one or two songs. When you're doing it, when I do it at home, I can fly through songs. Like the other day, yep. and my producer sent me a couple beats and I got through about 17 songs within the five, six hours that I was spending time making music. But And, and also in your, in your, like in your house, your apartment, wherever, like your home yeah. studio, I'm more comfortable. Yeah, exactly. You're in the crib, like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In the crib, you're comfortable. When you got out to the studio, like you booked it, that's number one. So you're yeah. t- there's a time limit. So you're thinking yeah. about that, you're like, oh, I gotta get this done before. You know that P's gone into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I got, yeah. you know I mean, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And then also, as well, if you're like one of those people that roll with Bear Man, mm. it's gonna be like Bear Man in the studio. That's like, the this guy's saying well. this, this yeah. guy's saying that, this guy's doing this, somebody's yeah. trying to light this spliff. It's just there, yeah, there's too much going on. So 100%, that makes so much sense. But yeah, yeah we're, we're running out of time now. Though. I do, yeah. I do wish I have more time to talk to you. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a more than likely um, invite you back onto the platform yeah, soon. Yeah. Anyways, that's all good. And I'm gonna keep following your journey in music. I fuck with you, I fuck with your music, and I fuck with your attitude as well. Appreciate my guy. No, one thousand percent. So um, I guess last thing I'll say before we, before we, before we um sign out is if you got any like, if you got like a like a specific message you want to send out there to like people that support you already and people that would want to start supporting you now, what would that be? Well, obviously for the people supporting me, obviously that's a massive thank you anyway because, you know, you don't have to care about my music but you decide to take your time out of your day and listen to my music. So that's much appreciated. And the message for my guys and for all the artists out there like, Share your boy's music. <laughs> Share your boy's music, man. But no, for Facts. Real, make sure you're consistent because really consistency is the key. It doesn't matter if you put out a hundred songs before someone hears you. As long as you have them songs out and you still have like a small following, people will, your following will bring you up. So be 100. consistent. Be consistent. 100. Yeah, that's my message. Come on, man. Thank you very much for coming through. Appreciate you for having me, man. Nah, you're welcome, brother. And with that said, Black English Hair by Closes Such Affairs. Bye-bye.